spiritual prayer warriors. The Lord gave a prophecy to me this week, and I wrote it down, and I wish to read it to you. But before we do, I want to pray. Lord God, by the Spirit's revelation, open our hearts, our eyes, our ears, that we would know, understand, and run with the vision. In Jesus' name. Here it is. My mighty ones are in the earth. They know how to move in the spiritual realm. They know how to run and not be weary. They know how to take a stand and not be moved. Their hearts are in tune with my voice and a false voice they will not follow. They are defenders of righteousness and truth is in their mouths. Many of them are humble and many of them are exalted. Some are young and some are old. That which they hold in common is my spirit is within them and upon them. My kingdom manifests wherever they go. Can you hear the sound of their feet running to battle? Do you hear their victory cry? You have lost, we have won. Do you see the banner of Christ going before them? My mighty ones will prevail. They are fighting for a people yet to be born. They are upholding covenants of honor I established with preceding generations. The fight is old, but the battle is new. This year is part of a transition to the new. What springs forth from this season will set the stage for the following decade. Tell my people to release the mighty one that is within them. The mighty ones are here. There's a plethora of revelation and understanding that absolutely builds faith and courage and launches us forward in the things of God for this year. But while I was receiving this from the Lord, there was scriptures that kept rolling over and over in my spirit. And I knew that the Lord was attaching it as personal observations for me. These perceptions in 1 Samuel 22, verses 1 and 2, we find the story of King David, and he's gone to Moab, and he's hidden in the cave. Listen, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adul. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him, and everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and they were about 400 men with him. The reason that this was leaping within my heart is because I knew that as the Lord was talking about the mighty ones who are here on the face of the earth, and regardless of whatever country that you are in, you are a mighty one if you will receive, and if you will hear the voice of God and enter into that spiritual dynamic whereby faith, by patience, by endurance, by third heaven authority, that you will take the commission of Christ and under the banner of Jesus himself will run the race, will fight the good fight, and will be victorious regardless of the circumstances. The power of the kingdom is within you. But one of the things that I perceived in this, because a lot of times we not only catch um, as prophets what it is that the Lord is saying, but the perception of the environment that we are in and how it applies. And that perception is that David, his family, and the 400 were there because of an oppressive, unrighteous government that was King Saul. An oppressive, unrighteous government. It says those who were in distress the word distress means oppressed, in trouble, in straits. They feel the walls coming in on the sides and they're, they're pressed within a, a pathway that is hard to go in. The word debt, of course, is talking about a sense of poverty that can be applied, but these were financial trouble and crisis. Financial things were coming in on them that were unjust and unrighteous. 
and not what God had for them at all. And in those situations, many of them probably were in legal trouble. And remember during the time that that scripture was written, when you were in legal trouble, you could be indentured. Your family could be indentured. Uh, and you have to work off that debt. And then it says, those who were discontented. And that word means angry, dissatisfied in life, and grieved of soul. So these people who were distressed, in debt, and discontented because of the oppressive government, does that not seem to apply a lot to us right here in America and in other nations? But here we find that uh, there is inflation that is abounding. There are so many things, and it's not just the monetary part of the debt. It's also the discontented. It is grieved in soul about the direction of our nation and the present administration that has been wicked and has done unrighteously with the citizens of America. Well, here's what happened. They came to David, and David became their captain. They grew into a much larger force as they matured, trained, and were tested. And I see that happening in the body of Christ, that we as prophetic warriors are growing in number. There is a large transfer of people on the other side. I'm talking about in not only a, the political spectrum, ideological perspective, a religious perspective. You got all these things that are going on where, where people are becoming disillusioned. They're in debt. They're, they're seeing the truth of what Jezebel has done to America. And they are escaping and coming in. And they're switching sides. There is a great change, a shift that is happening at this point. And with it, we are beginning to mature, to be trained, and to be victorious in our battle. There's a great turnaround this year. But no, in 1 Chronicles 12, it lists the bravest of those who were following David. David, I'm going to represent as the anointed of God. Those who have been anointed, not only in the church, to carry and to lead the people into this spiritual battle, light against darkness. It's an old battle. But it's a new battlefield, the Lord said. But also, in other walks of life, including politics, God is changing things. And notice he says, in that list of the bravest of them in 1 Chronicles 12, they're called David's mighty men. Now, the important thing to see, I think, that the Spirit's speaking to me, is mighty men actually is just one word in the Hebrew text. And it can also be translated valiant warriors or mighty ones. They're not gender specific. Even though when we read the scripture in 1 Samuel 22 about David, it says 400 men. That one was talking about males. But here it's not gender specific at all. It's saying mighty ones. You are a mighty one, whether you are a man or a woman. You are a mighty one, whether you are young or old. You are a mighty one. If you picked up the banner of Jesus and the cause of Christ and are going forth, this prophecy is for you. And remember, he said, tell my people to release the mighty one that is within them. It's up to you. It's up to you. The mighty one himself, Jesus, lives on the inside of you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You have the power of the kingdom there to be displayed, but are you using it? Is it dormant or is it being released? Is it something you hold to your heart or is it something you're applying to your life? When you apply it, when you stand up, it's kind of like sons of God in the book of Romans. Uh, Paul in chapter 8, he used the word children and then he used the word sons. Children are young. Children are boys and girls. They're the ones who uh, are being trained up and raised in the family. But the word sons 
means those who are mature enough to take on the family business, to work with Jesus. And the mighty ones here are those who have been trained and disciplined, and you have held the rank. You have taken the stand, as the Apostle Paul said. Having done all the stand, stand therefore in Ephesians 6. Stand against principalities and powers. Stand against those wicked spirits in heavenly places. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but it is in the spirit against demonic forces. Can you hear the marching? Do not be discouraged. Do not be dissuaded. Can you hear the marching? Do you hear the shout? You have lost, we have won. Do you hear it? Does it resonate within your spleen, in your heart? Do you know that you are the chosen of God? That you were called to be victorious in this? The mighty ones are here. Rise up and be a mighty one. That is the call of the Spirit now. Mighty one. And get ready for what the Lord is going to do through each and every one of us, individually and collectively, this year. It will open the prophetic doors for the body of Christ over the next decade. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every single listener, every viewer, Lord God. I pray that the anointing leaps within them that they would hear and they would run and they would fight and they would win because nothing can hold us back. The mighty ones are here. I'm going to ask you to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Also visit our website, which is the link in the description. And when you go there, you might want to consider becoming a partner of the ministry. I'm going to ask you to give into the revelation and into the anointing of what God is doing through this ministry. And together, we are going to win the fight that lays before us, all for the cause of Christ. God bless you.